So you don't have any problems with like rappers calling women bitches and hoes and stuff like that? Nah, cause tell you the truth, some of them is bitches, see? You gotta realize that. You got the sisters and then the bitches. Huh? You know? You got the sisters. Are you saying the bitches? Uh-huh. What makes those the bitches? Them the bitches cause you see how they dress. Just look how they dress. Sisters don't dress like that. I realize that you got the sisters and then the bitches, huh? You know, you got the sisters. Are you saying the bones of the bitches? Uh huh. What makes those the bitches? Them the bitches, cause you see how they dress. Just look how they dress. Sisters don't dress like that. I called the women over to see what they had to say about being called bitches and hoes because of what they were wearing. Just because we want to enjoy the weather and have on some nice shorts and a nice bra. That's just like a panty and bra set. You know what I'm saying? Do you feel like men sexually objectify you? That's a man for you, though. So you, you don't have a problem with, with men who objectify you at all? You know what I'm saying? Or that, no that, 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 that focus on your body parts? That's their opinion. That's their problem. Okay, how do y'all feel about images of women in um, rap music? Well, if it's not it's not really directed towards you personally, it's just what they say. It's sex sell. If you don't take offense to it, then hey. Do you have like, a problem with, with dudes referring to you as like bitches and hoes? But I know he's not talking to me. I know what I am. Right. So. say when these rappers are calling you know women bitches and hoes they're not talking about me it's like yo they are talking about you if george bush was to get on national tv and make a speech and he started calling black people niggas would you be like i don't know who george bush is talking about but he ain't talking about me so yeah. they're coming out Those images are everywhere as well. Those images are in advertising, those images are in movies, those images are in TV programs. The really negative thing about music videos and about advertising is that that is the only way in which women are presented. I think it has a lot to do with boys figuring out early that girls are there for us to sexually objectify or to be our plaything. Treating women as objects has been an age-old tradition in many cultures. In the West, images of beauty and youth have dominated the minds of women and men even before the days of Venus and Cleopatra. We know that, that women are so affected by the images uh, that are portrayed of them in um, magazines, on TV, all around them that show the, the perfect woman, the ideal woman, and inevitably they compare themselves to that woman. This is what I find very ironic, that we try to seek liberation, that women here try to seek liberation through other means, but we're, really they're not truly liberated because they're not psychologically liberated. They're still worrying about what do men think, um, what has the latest fashion designer who is almost always a man, what has he designed for women to look good in this particular season. Therefore we find that young women attempt to be things that they're not. We find a lot of bulimia. We find a lot of anorexia. So health issues are, are, are paramount when you begin to take those images as part of the way we ought to be. Many Muslim women see their mode of dress as a form of freedom from our unrelenting obsession with the female body. Stressing the profound worth of the inner person, Islam reduces the importance of physical and material factors that often act as a barrier between people and an obstacle to true belief. You begin to focus more on who you are inside as opposed to what you look like on the outside. That doesn't mean that you don't give beauty its place. Everyone, I think, beauty has its place. But uh, 
I don't believe it's the main goal for any human being, male or female. Our, uh, the respect you get from, from basic society, sure there are a lot of misconceptions out there and a lot of stereotypes about Muslim women, but still when a lot of uh, non-Muslims see hijab, it's almost like an instinctive uh, feeling of respect for, for the hijab, maybe because it's different and it's something they've never seen before, or I don't know, maybe they just realize that it is something to be respected. For me, this is very sort of important to who I am because it's something that I feel is my right as a Muslim woman, and I feel that it, um, I feel a lot stronger, you know, dressing Islamically, covering, and it's something I'm very proud of. Rather than uh, spending all day sort of preparing yourself for putting that body out there in front of public view, are, you know, is your body in good enough shape? Is your hair the right color? Is your, are your clothes fitting you the way that, that show that body off, uh, you're preparing yourself in other ways. You're preparing yourself mentally, spiritually. Of course you want to be healthy, but uh, your priority is not how you appear to others. Your priority is, is who you are, what you have to say, wh how you will affect world. others. An important element of modesty in Islam is that it holds both genders responsible for establishing a proper code of conduct. This holistic approach promotes cooperation between men and women rather than confrontation. I think the Islamic approach to modesty is very practical. Actually, I think it's more than practical. I think it's deeply wise. God has created this attraction between men and women. It's something natural, it's something normal, but within a certain context. And taking that into account, this is why I think the, the onus of modesty is placed on both. Both men and women are individually responsible for their actions and both will be accountable on the Day of Judgment for what they do. It means that the space between men and women is very wide. And it means, therefore, that if I'm a man or a woman, across gender, Islam prohibits the touching, the gazing, the leering, the slurs, the jokes, the remarks, which are demeaning or disrespectful to man or woman. And those are very much, by the way, written into current policies in many of the institutions and communities I work with. If I look back on, on the problems that I had um, before I was Muslim, a lot of them had to do with, with uh, the fact that there were no limits between men and women um, in terms of their socialization. And it led to a lot of situations in which you would find yourself uncomfortable. Those things are solved in a Muslim community. Um, in which Muslim men and women observe those, those limits. One person in high school, he once said to me, you know, I think it's basically male oppression that you cover your face. And I said to him, well, if I'm oppressed, shouldn't I feel oppressed? Another traditional